evening. It's it's Monday. It it's is. Monday. We're back at it. We didn't get an extra day this weekend. It was weird. You don't ever get it. <laughs> Pastor <next>. Toby, <laughs> Chalk Knox, on the water boy. It's good to be with you. You know, good good news. Oh, good news. I love we, good we have news. good news today. Yeah. Um, if you're a liberal, you don't have to do this anymore. Right. What's that? Oh my god! Oh my god! It's so nice! It's so nice! Uh, how's the family Welcome and the back. children? Everybody yeah, okay? You okay? Fantastic! Are you okay? <laughs> oh, it's you're so nice! I only promise we can kiss. No, we can't. No, no kiss this. like on the cheek. Cause oh, I see is, what you mean. Go on, Phil's turn. Off your pot. Get off your cheek. No. Damn it. Oh. <laughs> this is real. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get monkey so pox that way. You too. Great. Well, you. It's so, it is I emotional. I don't. don't. I, I like this, it, but I don't like it at the same time. This is it fantastic. Just... Oh, thank you for giving me this emoji. This, uh, that... Well, welcome back. Great. Welcome back. Uh, thank you. You know, these would be nice at gay pride parades, I guess, huh? Yeah, and keep people oh. from getting monkey pox. Well, oh. yeah. I mean... well and, and the reason <laughs> why liberals don't have to wear masks and do whatever they were doing there before is because Biden declared this. Mr. President, first Detroit auto show in three years. Yeah. Is the pandemic over? The pandemic is over. Yay! We still have a problem with COVID. We're oh. still doing a lot of work on it. <laughs> uh, it's But the pandemic is over. If you notice, no one's wearing masks. Everybody seems to be in pretty good shape. And so I think it's changing. And I think this is a perfect example of it. I mean, that is two old men, but that's like... <laughs> <laughs> Two old men on a guided tour. <laughs> so since it's yeah. over, all the lawsuits and stuff like that, man, just go. No, I'm just wondering. Not mine. Dude, it's nice. Reformation Heritage Books mm. is a publisher and bookseller that. whose mission is to equip the saints to serve Christ and his church through biblical, experiential, and practical resources mm. that will keep you immune from that kind of craziness. Amen. RHB's reading material is God glorified in accord with scriptures and historic reformed creeds for the promotion and defense of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Each book they publish or sell, whether from the Puritans or modern day authors, subscribes to the three forms of unity, the Belgic Confession, the Heidelberg Catechism and the Canons of Dort, and the Westminster Standards. Find out more at heritagebooks.org. Thank you, Heritage. If, if you were asked this question, How's how's your mental state? I mean, wouldn't you? How would you? Well, let, let's listen to how Biden would answer that. <laughs> how about that, Mr. President? You are the oldest president ever. <laughs> Pretty good shape, huh? <laughs> Which leads to my next question: You are more aware of this than anyone, or not? Some people ask whether you are fit for the job, and when you hear that, I wonder what you think. Watch me. <laughs> I mean, honest to God, that's all I think. Watch me. If you think I don't have the energy level or the mental acuity. The best way to get something done, if you, if it holds near and dear to you that you uh, <laughs> um, like to be able to... Anyway. From, <laughs> from, uh, uh, Char excuse me, from Charlotte, one, uh, another line going from, in, in Florida, down to Tampa. Of Putin's kleptocracy. In Florida, down to Tampa. <laughs> yeah. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was going to put him in uh, foot, foot. <laughs> The idea that... Um, <laughs> Los Angeles and... Uh, and uh, um, uh, um, what am I doing here? For two reasons. One, to... <laughs> Oh. oh no! We no. haven't been able to communicate it in a way that is. Uh, um, let me say it another way. But the nature, not oh. a solid meeting with um, with. Uh, who was that one person? The uh, I met with who? They make a very good point. Here's the deal. Here's what drives the driver in the states that are affected. Here's what the, you can do, the drivers. The, um... Oh, no. Oh, man. <laughs> uh... Oh. I, I uh... I, I want to... Wow. Somewhere halfway through there, I start feeling really bad. I, like, that's bad. But... You know, here's one of the things that I think about. Wow. When we see our leaders, we got to look at it and be like, oh, that's America right now. 
Mm-hmm. Like that's yeah. a yeah. person who rightly is leading this country, and yeah. I feel I really did feel bad about that though. That's yes. that's not so. Mm. So this is coming off. Uh, he, uh, uh, he was on sixty minutes on Sunday night. Can you see the AIDS though? The AIDS have to be like. No! Don't say that! There's video out there! Like, I, I, hate, I would hate to be an aide for Biden. Because just you just... I think we were watching it earlier with the producers, and everybody was waiting for... We were so happy that he could remember acuity. We were like, whoo! Oh, he got the word, right? That's a great word. A great <laughs> and we were happy for him. And, like, he's not our guy, but we're happy because he still represents us. Anyway, this is just so... I, I kind of wonder if the aides are, at this point, just have a little gambling behind the scenes it's but, bad. You know, it has to be bad so he's on 60 minutes uh this this last sunday night right um and it was basically two old men on a guided tour and having conversations one with each was other. better than the other uh, one was, i'll let you decide yeah, which yeah. one uh, and and so that same president who his mental state is supposedly doing well was also asked about uh, the economy and inflation is the economy going to get worse before it gets better no i don't think so And you would tell the American people that inflation is going to continue to decline? No, I'm telling the American people that we're going to get control of inflation. And their prescription drug prices are going to be a hell of a lot lower. Their health care costs are going to be a lot lower. Their basic costs for everybody. Their energy prices are going to be lower. They're going to be in a situation where they begin to gain control again. I'm more optimistic than I've been in a long time. You ever, you ever, um, there's a couple things here. One of them is, I don't. I need somebody to tell me the truth. Right yeah. now, if yeah. you if you just take a look at, around, there were I just did an article. Thirteen hundred New York Times employees are choosing not to go back to work because of the economy, inflation, gas, all that stuff. They realize, and they broke. Let's just be honest. COVID broke people. Mm-hmm. They realize that they can work from home and don't have to give nearly as much effort. Yep. So that's one thing. But then they realize if they have to give effort, it's going to cost them a lot more than they want to pay. Mm-hmm. Right. And their job isn't paying them enough. So you got 1300 employees from New York times. You have 15,000 nurses that are, that were striking. Mm-hmm. And then you got the in trans, Minnesota. That was Minnesota. That was Minnesota. Yep. Uh-huh. Then you have the, the, the whole train situation. And trans. And, and trans. And tra- and tra- train. Trans. We also have the trans situation. Yeah. The, the, but, that's right. true, Just but I don't know sure. if they're striking <laughs> yet. I'd be happy if they started striking. You have pilots that are striking. We saw just recently in Seattle, Tacoma, Tacoma, Washington here. There were lines all Man. the way to the parking mm. lot just to go through security, mm. to go through out, the security out, checkpoint. Out the uh, um, uh, garage, parking garage, so not it, just the parking lot in Seattle. So oh th- so what is that, a three-hour wait? Who knows how long that is just oh to go through goodness. there? What else did you have? Oh, that's right. Um, we're in the Sandsdemic, and you have $7.2 trillion pulled out of the yep. stock. <clears throat> so, oh, the stock market. So, yep. Stock market. So yep. tell me the truth, though. Everybody's looking at the situation, and nobody – you had Yellen telling us, uh, oh, no, inflation's, inflation's not going to happen. Not no, gonna happen. Yeah, no inflation. No inflation. Yep. Twice came back and said, oh, there'll be a little bit. They don't have any idea, concept, what they're doing. And they also did an economic analysis looking at uh, Biden's um, executive orders and how much it's cost the U.S. And it's, and the, the analysis was basically a Biden Biden has signed 99 executive orders so far in his presidency. Um <laughs> Uh, Obama did 276, Trump did 225, something like that. Biden's already tracking to pass them if he keeps up the same uh, From executive rate. orders. And and Biden signed 99 executive orders are already, which is going to cost us about $1.5 trillion. Um, that's what they estimated through their economic analysis. At, at this point, I don't care if Republican, Democrat, I don't care who you are. But if I broke my leg and I see that my leg is broken and I come to you and be like, hey, man, what's going on here? It's like, ah, oh, it's fine. You know, just put some Robitussin on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You'll be good. Like, I don't I won't I don't believe you. Yeah. Like, don't lie. To, I know it's midterms. I want I know you want to be. But tell me the truth, yeah. because regardless if I like it or not, you're still my president. You're still my leader. And so I would like to know whether or not if people are going to make decisions about what they're going to do with their life and their fortune for the next 15, 20 years, based off of comments like that, he's ruining people. And that is wrong. Well, I mean, I think the, I mean, I understand what you're trying to say with the words coming out of your mouth. (laughs) Okay. But, but the, the church doesn't really want the same thing either. We don't want to be told the truth about the state of the end condition of our church. We don't want to be told the truth about the church's role in connection to society. And we've kind of, demonstrated this already we don't um want to know the truth about women pastors or you know uh, yep. jd greer doesn't want to know the truth about pronoun hospitality i mean you know this is just throughout that that same argument's happening in the church mm. right we, now we we like to have our ears tickled and it's going to kill us right yeah 
is going to kill us. But tickle us to death. Yeah, but that's but that's the thing is I think you know that that's what um, you know. Or, or uh, as Neil Postman put it, amusing ourselves to death. Right. You know, we want yeah. to be entertained. We want to be told that everything is fine. And I think, but but I think here's the thing. I mean, you're assuming that people actually have an optimistic view. Like, I, I don't think people are actually that optimistic. I, well, I don't think people are acting like they're optimistic right now. Yeah. But I think, I think, but if he comes out and says, you know, hey, I think things are going to be fine. Everybody gets happy. Yeah. I think, I think people are like, oh, maybe they will be fine. But at everybody, but the, everybody knows that they're not fine. Mm. Everybody is going to the gas pump. Everybody is right now. People are homesteading more than they ever have before in America because they know something is coming down the pike that is not going to be good for America. I still feel like there's a pretty tiny fraction of people, but more than we ever used to have before. Sure, sure. And it's because I think they're uh, seeing this. Right. But I think a lot of people though think, you know, hey, we've been through this before. Economic downturns. This happens. There's <laughs> cycles. I mean, I don't know if we've been through this before. I, uh, no, I, I agree with you. Yeah. But I'm just saying I bet you I bet you that the the vast majority of people in this land think, ah, uh, you know, it's, it's it's the same. I think he's telling people what they want to hear. Right. But we don't need to hear things that make us feel good. We need to know how to prepare for what's happening. Right. And, well, think, and, and let, let's bring this last clip into it. He goes on to talk about um you know, what he can do to prevent a recession. Sir, with the Federal Reserve rapidly raising interest rates, what can you do to prevent a recession? Continue to grow the economy. And we're growing the economy. It's growing in, in a way that it hasn't in years and years. Is it, though? It's not. That's not. You remember, he's hanging his hat on the recovery that happened naturally from the government saying you can get back to work. Right. He keeps quoting. That's, that's we, not the same thing as the economy growing. That's right. Right. He keeps saying we, we've recovered 10 million jobs. Well, right. no, <laughs> that's what happened when you said you could go back to work. Right. And and so all his economic um, recovery is not the same thing as creation. That, that's right. And so all his economic bragging that he he brings up in this in this argument and continue on in, on 60 minutes was all like, hey, this is what we've done because. Because we said people could go back to work. Also, you don't want your president saying we will grow the economy. Yeah, we'll get. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That, it's it, that is not the civil magistrate's job. Yeah. It, biblically mm-hmm. speaking, it's not his job, and constitutionally speaking, it's not his job. Mm-hmm. You got to remember what I'm going to grow the economy. That's not your. Yeah, that, yeah. that means he's he's claiming to be the boss. Yeah, yeah, he's claiming to be the head of the house. And if he's the head of the house, he can also tell you that you can't come to work anymore. Yep. Which is why, he, and he also declared that the pandemic is over. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> I'm the boss. You know, yeah, I think one thing we got to make sure that we're paying attention to. There's a larger story happening here. Last week we had Kamala Harris come on. Was it Meet the Press? That's right. Yeah. Everything's good. Talk about the bad things the Republicans and are we're doing. We're doing great with immigration. Immigration is yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly, and then it all yeah. falls apart. Yeah. And right. now Biden's on Sunday night this Biden week. What's going to happen by Friday? That's what I'm you just know? saying. It's going to be really interesting to see. But yeah. it's not just Biden. They pulled out Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton is actually out right now campaigning for, you know, basically the, the Democrats. And it's funny watching Bill Clinton out there because it's like, man, I almost missed the good old times. Like the, I almost miss Bill Clinton because he seems at least. I did not inhale. <laughs> I take I take I that not, any day right now. I did not inhale over against a guy that. Yeah. Never mind. I understand. <laughs> There's two things. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Kevin Freeman up next across politics. We're going to ask him if the economy is good and what we need to do to fix it if we can at all. More cross politics coming up next. Did you figure those two things out? <laughs> Hi, I'm Robert Borton, CEO of Classical Conversations, the world's largest classical Christian homeschooling community. I'm launching a new podcast, Refining Rhetoric. If you like cross politics or just listen to hear what crazy stuff they're saying today, you will enjoy Refining Rhetoric. You can find us on your favorite podcast platform. I practice the 15 tools of learning by interviewing great guests, looking at current events, and talking about cryptocurrency. This is where Dave and I plan this year's company holidays. Let's go through the list. Easter, too religious. St. Patrick's Day? Too white. Mother's Day? Way too cisgendered. All of your usual holidays have been canceled this year. But we still have Karl Marx's birthday! Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Need a real reason to party? 
Find a new job at redballoon.work. Welcome back to Cross Politic on the Fight Life East Network. The mission of Armored Republic is to honor Christ by equipping free men with tools of liberty necessary to preserve God-given rights. In the Armored Republic, there's no king but Christ. They're free craftsmen. Body armor is a tool of liberty. They create tools of liberty. Free men must remain ever vigilant against tyranny wherever it appears. God has given us the tools of liberty needed to defend the rights he's bestowed on us. Armored Republic is honored to offer you those tools. So visit them and support us at ar 500 armor.com i got me some of those tools of liberty mm-hmm. <laughs> just want to say that I, okay yeah hey with us right now we're very grateful to have kevin freeman he's founder and ceo of freeman global holdings and new york times best selling author and author uh, and uh, host of economic war room on the blaze economic oh. yep. war room yep. on the mm-hmm. blaze he's also the author of according to plan the elite's secret plan to sabotage america mm. Ooh, kevin thanks for joining us on cross politic Oh, it's an honor and a privilege. Well, um, this last uh, weekend, I guess Sunday night, Biden was on 60 Minutes proclaiming just how amazing the economy is doing. And uh, so I want to have you listen to that clip, watch that clip with us, and then have you respond. Sir, with the Federal Reserve rapidly raising interest rates, what can you do to prevent a recession? Continue to grow the economy. And we're growing the economy. It's growing in, in a way that it hasn't in years and years. So, is Biden right? That's what we need to do? Well, number one, that's kind of a stupid answer because <laughs> what what can you do to uh, reverse economic decline? Grow the economy. <laughs> I mean, he didn't, he didn't give any specific action, any specific answer. Uh, and number two, he commented on it's growing better than it has in years and years. That's factually incorrect. It grew much better during the Trump administration. Uh, and number three, it's not actually growing. The last two reports on GDP have right. shown that we are declining two quarters in a row, standard definition of recession, although he redefined it so he wouldn't be tagged with recession. That's where we are today. Mm-hmm. What is what is the actual reality of the American economy right now? Are you looking at it and saying, oh, we're going to pull out of this. We'll be fine. Well, you know, they they had an earnings report from Federal Express. It was terrible. And the CEO of FedEx said, we're entering a worldwide recession. The earnings are terrible. Well, if anybody knows, it's Federal Express because they know what people are shipping. They know what purchasing is like. So they have a good feel for it. The stock market is reflecting recession. Uh, CEO of FedEx is saying the recession and the economic numbers say recession. So when uh, in 60 minutes, he Biden was asked, um, is the economy um, in a recession? Biden said no. And then he they followed up with, is inflation um, uh, getting worse? And Biden said no. Um, how would you like respond? If I was to ask you those same questions, how would you respond? Well, you know, President Biden said that inflation, well, it didn't go up. It was 8.2%. Now it's 8.3%. So that's barely an increase. The 8.3% inflation is the worst inflation in in, uh, the last 40 years. Hmm. I mean, you got to go back to the early 80s to get inflation like we're experiencing now. Hmm. And of course, we're going back to the policies of the 70s with the Carter administration. So we see why there is inflation. Uh, The only way to fix inflation is to actually unleash the American economy by reducing regulation, reducing taxes, getting the supply side up. He's right. Uh, Supply chain problems have created a lot of the inflation. But the answer isn't more regulations or demanding things. The answer is unleashing Americans to start manufacturing and creating things again. And they've crushed the supply side through every policy that they've administered. Kevin, um, you know, uh, I don't think, I mean, I think we can blame a, a Biden for a lot of kind of our economic woes. I think you can point to maybe gas prices and sp- some specific things he could blame on Biden. Um, but I also think like where we're at has been a, a team effort from Republicans and Democrats to give us the inflation we have now. Be, you know, stimulus, two stimulus packages were vi- voted in under Trump administration and one stimulus package sure. under uh, uh, um, the Biden administration. Is, how do you read that? Yeah. So what Biden did was he took policies that were bad and made them worse. Uh, We have too much debt. We ran up a lot of debt in the Trump administration, but at least the economy is rapidly growing at that point. Mm -hmm. Uh, What he did, though, when he came in and 
kept us in lockdown much longer than we should have, or at least encouraged lockdown much longer than he should have, uh, put in the vaccine mandate, which caused a lot of people to get exit the workforce. They didn't want to be a part of it. So he took bad policies and made them worse. The good parts of the Trump policies were removed, which were literally unleashing American entrepreneurs, unleashing American investment, energy independence. So Biden's solution is not drill more oil, it's release it from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. And, you know, and they, these are all long-term bad policies, uh, but I think they're according to plan. And I think that that's, you know, that's why I wrote the book, According to Plan, to point out uh, whether it's Afghanistan, whether it is the policies in the labor market or inflation or or whatever, they all seem to be harming America. And I think that's according to their plan. Yeah, I want to get to your book in just a second. But real quick, I want you to talk to the average American man who has a family, three, four kids, you know, his wife. He's never had um, to live through a recession before. Could you talk about what he needs to be doing during a recession? What do you do? During a recession, and especially when you got the kind of government that is not going to sh- cut back on regulation, the good is probably tax you more. They just hired a bunch of agents to make sure that's a reality. What do you do during a recession? Well, you know, what what you need to do is prepare for in the good times. This is the old Joseph story. So when the good times are good, you set money aside, you set grain aside or whatever. Oh. It's very difficult to respond in in, in a recession particularly the job market is pretty decent get to works you know if if you're if you've got enough money that you thought that you could sit out for a while uh save that money and get to work get a job get a good job uh get whatever benefits and pay that you can get because right now it looks like the labor market's tight and so people are looking to hire employees there will come a time where they're going to let be letting people go because they can't afford to keep them because the benefits or whatever that are mandated will be too much for a corporation to handle. So we're heading into really rough waters. If we don't have a change uh, in direction economically, we will be in the midst of a very deep recession. And people will say, geez, I wished I'd taken that job when it was available. Mm, that's really Ke- good stuff. Kevin, you, you already alluded to you know what he ought to be doing, what what they ought to be cutting regulations, ought to be cutting taxes and so forth. Um, if, you know, if, If Biden called you today and said, you know, Kevin, I just wanted to get your opinion. What are the specific things I should do? Quit. I'm sorry. 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 (laughs) (laughs) Apart apart from resigning immediately. um, I mean, what are some like very specific policy changes that you would say you need to do this yesterday? I I would go back and put the Keystone Pipeline back in place. I would open up and encourage as much American energy development as possible. I would reverse, uh, the, well, first off, I, I just cancel the um, Build Back Better and I would I would cancel the, the inflation packages that they put together because both of them are terrible for the economy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I would go out and tell the American people, we're no longer at war with business. I would mm. tell the party to tamp down on the, the woke nonsense. I, you know, I'd yell at Disney and say, hey, Disney, stop making movies that offend half your audience. So Buzz Lightyear is a failure. Yeah. It's, let's start be pro-America again. And I, I would try and revitalize that American patriotic spirit. Tell them we're in an economic war and we can win the war if we work together. Stop dividing us and start uniting us. Wow. Kevin, wow. Kevin, I think he's running. Kevin, he's, what are you Kevin. running for? <laughs> According to planbook.com is where you can get your book. According to plan, whose plan is it? And what is the plan to take down America? Well, it, it goes back to um, the Communist Party USA. And they, in Communist Party USA, they published 45 goals of the Communist Party. They got picked up by a guy I knew, uh, W. Cleon Skousen, who wrote the book, The Naked Communist. They got picked up by a Florida congressman and entered in 1963 into the congressional record. And as you read through those, and I've listed some of them in the book, they look like exactly what's happening. You want to divide America on racial lines. You want to promote homosexuality and promiscuity. Mm. You, You want to open the borders. You want to tear down faith in corporations and and you want to make art ugly so that people look at that so what is that 
look mm-hmm. like, not no longer beautiful. You want to capture one or more or both of the political parties. I mean, you just walk through and you say, this is exactly what's happening. So if that's one plan and the other plan was put out by the Chinese communists <laughs> and it's titled Unrestricted Warfare, both are at work today because they see America and individual liberty and individual freedom are first 10 amendments to the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, as the biggest threat to their ability to take over with collectivism, socialism, yeah. Marxism, whatever you want to call it. So that's that's the plan. Who's running the plan? Where, where, I mean, well, are, there, are there actually people in, in smoke-filled rooms saying, okay, what's next? Let's do that one now. Well, I don't know. It's it's more Davos and Switzerland, and I don't know if they're smoke filled because that that goes against their policies. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, right. But the <laughs> World Economic Forum, and you know, where they have agenda, uh, the, uh, pro- what was agenda twenty one, and then they have the the uh, pandemic, the two hundred one, all of those things. They're talking about how we take up America and the rest of the world into a brave new world which is a dystopian collectivist vision that they have. And so, yes, they're doing that. And on the other side, it's the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, Before that, it was the KGB and the Soviet Union. Do you think, though, that they have won the imagination? The imagination of the people are already set towards this kind of dystopia. You know, I remember when people bought cars. Now, everybody that I can remember, they just kind of lease them. And then they go back and they lease another car and they're not ever owning anything, but they always got the new hotness. Right. And so there seems to be this mindset where they're fine leasing things or not owning things and being very happy because they got it. There's an ad uh, that we were we were talking about before the show where Gorbachev is, uh, you know, he, wo- pizza walk, he walks into a piece of hut yeah. and these guys start arguing about the goodness and the, and the badness of Gorbachev. And they're like, yes, but Gorbachev. Gave us Pizza Hut. Yep. And then they all come mm-hmm. together like, ah, yay, Gorbachev, Gorbachev. Yeah. And, I'm, and, and it's funny because it seems weird, but that's kind of where we are. It's like, so long as I have a Pizza Hut, so long as I have all the things I want, that's kind of the imaginations of people right now. Why do I care? Well, I would argue capitalism gave them a Pizza Hut. <laughs> come and, on now. Uh, they, <laughs> they were able, able to enjoy that because of that. There's a story from Houston when uh, when Boris Yeltsin came to visit Houston and he was working number two to Gorbachev in, yep. in the Soviet Union. And he knew the Soviet Union would fall when at the end of his meetings, we showed him all our rocket technology and everything else. And he said, um, okay, I wanna get some vodka on my way out of town. So they said, we'll stop at our at our favorite grocery store. And he said, no, 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 I'm gonna stop at, at my pick. And so they gave him a map and he just, put his finger down and they stopped at the closest store to that, which was a Randall's, uh, which is now Safeway. <laughs> and they went in there and he could not believe all of the wide selection mm-hmm. of fruits and vegetables and processed packaged foods and everything else. Right. And he wrote in his memoirs, at that moment, I knew the Soviet Union would fail because capitalism better serves the consumer than, than uh, collectivism. And if without freedom and capitalism and, and you wouldn't have a pizza hut in the Soviet Union. And so those people that are satisfied with that, hey, you'll owe nothing and like it from the World Economic Forum does not mean you will lease your car. It means you will not have a car mm. leased, owned or otherwise. Mm. And you'll like it. Oh. <laughs> According to planbook.com, Kevin, you're going to hang out with us a little more backstage. We're talk- I want to talk about how do you have a free market when you got all this stupid regulation? you got to have a way to get around it. More cross politic coming up backstage. So if you're single, get married. If you're married, have you some kids. And if you have kids, go baptize them. Until tomorrow, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Go fight, laugh, and feast. This is cross politic. Home. It's where you build your legacy where traditions are started, seeds are planted, meals are shared, and stories are told. We are Chris Natalie Carpenter, owners of Story Real Estate, and our team of top agents helps people find homes in Moscow, Idaho, and around the country. Have you thought about a move? Contact us to get connected with a top agent who shares your values and puts your family first. Or reach out to us about our Moscow Relocation Guide. Wherever you're looking to go, we can help you find home. Call us at Story Real Estate or visit us at storyrealestate.com and start building your legacy. Meet Big Ed. He has a tax-funded taste for children. 
Big Ed knows that the best grooming starts early. He has a plan for your preschoolers, a plan to gender confuse your grade schoolers. But if you think his grooming stops there, you have not been paying attention. Big Ed wants to liberate your daughters from old fashioned ideas like, well, you already know. Big Ed has dorm rooms ready for you in prison buildings of learning and professors standing by dedicated to grooming young adults in doubt and unbelief. After all, he is the gatekeeper of this brave new world. And if you want a job, you'll need to pay him with years of your life for a permission slip. Yeah, whatever. You think David paid Goliath for a certificate in giant management before those two squared off? Did Luther major in theses? Was George Washington summa cum laude in empire repellents? while Jefferson focused on ag with a minor in declarations. When the world needs saving, meaningful vocations abound for those who are truly prepared. And the truth is, despite Marxist advances, this is still America and Big Ed is still a voluntary opt-in. So don't, not at any level, not preschool, not middle school, not college. It isn't complicated. When Big Ed offers you free candy, Stay away. You'll thank us later. We know it's crazy, but run with us here. Men and women were created in the image of God. You don't need a government certificate of faux learning for personal validation or permission to work. You were born with divine permission to pursue knowledge and understanding, truth, goodness, and beauty. And at New St. Andrews College, we are committed to helping students do just that to their fullest potential. In an age dominated by chaos when learning is on a choke leash controlled by Big Ed and his many strange friends, ours is an education for outlaws, an education for men and women committed to building a beautiful and free society in the ruins of the Western world. When thinking is outlawed, only outlaws will think. Yes, Big Ed hates what we do, but his hatred brings us joy. New St. Andrews College. Liberal Arts for Outlaws. Mind, Body, and Soul.